come to some more of them. But what a better way to start than with chocolate. So I'd like to introduce you to Chris Wolfe. Um, Chris is a lecturer at the UHI Argyle in Hospitality and Cookery. And one of his many passions, it's a real hobby of his, is chocolate. And uh, over the years, Chris has immersed himself in a whole world of, of chocolates, such as the Caligo Chocolate Academy, which is very prestigious, uh, learning about uh, different ways to, uh, to make chocolate, and he's created chocolate sculptures. You need to tell us about that uh, later, Chris. Um, so today you're going to get a chance to learn about different types of chocolate, how to make your own chocolate to different styles, and um, you're going to get to taste some as well. And I understand you're going to give us some cheat tips so that we can uh, recreate yes. what you're doing back at home. So, so over to you, Chris. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay. Yep. Okay. Hi, guys. No instruction needed for myself. It's already done. Um, just to say about for today, it's very much okay. going to be about chocolate. You can come and taste or we'll pass around chocolate to, to you to taste. You know, the further back you are, the later you're going to get it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we, we're very much looking at different types of chocolate, some bit of history, a bit on how to handle it when you're at home. If you're really keen, you can come back tomorrow and I'm going to be doing truffles. So if you're keen tomorrow morning, um, I'll be doing actually making how to make some truffles in your own home, and again, cheats as to how you can make that work quite well um, for yourself, especially as Christmas is coming. Um, I tend to cheat for Christmas presents, I just make everybody chocolate. Mm. It's easy. Um, so, okay, so first of all, I don't know how much anybody knows about chocolate. It's been on the go for about 4,000 years, so we're going back pre Mayan stage um, in South America. So. Over the years, that started creeping into Europe. Colombians decided to begin with that they could make it into a drink. When it came over to Europe, it very much was a luxury item for the rich and faint, well, very rich, um, and it was a drink and often classed as a medicine. So melted down into, um, at that point, just into water and add nothing to it. So it really was quite a bitter and you'd get a chance to try flavour that they, we, they had in those days. Um, the, from that point, the Swiss then discovered if you added milk and sugar to it, to the drink, it made it a really sort of palatable drink, really nice, and eventually they discovered how to actually make it into a, a solid product, and, set, and hence the chocolate bar was born. So, very, very quickly, um, I'm hoping on the screen you can see, okay, these are the flowers and these are the, the cocoa pods that you would get on the trees. From there, inside the cocoa pod, you have the cocoa beans, which then are fermented into sort of, they actually look quite nice like that, but trust me, they're very bitter, very dry, and actually not very nice at this stage. But from that point, they're crushed down, and they're crushed, and they're crushed, and crushed, till eventually, with no added liquid, they then become a liquid by this conching method. Now, you'll know that there's a huge variety in cost of chocolate, from you know, the, the, cheap, the cheap cooking chocolates right up to really expensive hotel chocolates and the link chocolates. The cheap chocolates, they only do this process for six, eight hours, the expensive chocolates like Lindt are three to five days that they just stir the chocolate until it becomes that really smooth chocolate. So what, what you end up with is these products. You'll end up with cocoa powder, cocoa butter, sugar, and then they add vanilla to give you some flavor. So very, very quick sort of basics on that. Just in pass around this, especially for the ladies, Um, recommended, don't eat it. <laughs> Just rub it in your hands. For those that, that use moisturiser, 
This is your base to a lot of moisturizers that you get. This is the cocoa butter. So when they make that cocoa bean, they press out the cocoa separate. So you end up with the cocoa powder, and then you end up with the cocoa butter separate. And they actually, we, we don't use all the cocoa powder it produces because so much cocoa butter goes into the industry for beauty, beauty products and so on. But it really does, you know, as you're using it, um, you, you, have, you, you haven't got something. Oh, thank you. I'm not cocoa butter. But you can just feel it starting to moisturise your hands. Um, we'll, pa we'll pass around some, some napkins for you to put, put the bits and pieces in. It's so moisturising, isn't it? It really does. It leaves your hands really, really nice. Little things that it's not used much for nowadays. Pass, do you want to pass that around at the same time? <coughs> it's also used for cooking. You can fry your steak in it. You can fry anything in it. You just put it in a pan, melts down, just like any, any fat. It's just 100% fat. Again, what's coming around now, you might not want... It's worth trying it, but you might not like it. This is pure cocoa. So there's no cocoa butter in it. It's just compressed, basically the compressed powder. Very, very strong. A few people like it. That real sort of it intense. It is quite bitter. And again, you're missing out here. You're missing out here. That's right. That's all right. That's all right. <coughs> Not everybody's going to like this. But one or two people will go, oh yeah. But again, there's not much flavour to it. It's, it's cocoa, but it's almost like tipping the cocoa powder bottle. Pack it in your... Ooh, right. This is, this is the equivalent of your espresso. It's like a shot of ex really strong espresso. Does anybody like that? That dark, dark, pure. <laughs> yeah? Not too much. No, you just no, need to it's, it's like an espresso. You don't want that sort of. You, could, you, could, you couldn't, you couldn't, well, I know a few people who possibly could, but you can't, you can't drink a, a full coffee cup of espresso, it's just too much. But again, there's caffeine in this, the same as there is in coffee. So you can get that buzz like a coffee will, will give you for that. So that's two of the main constituents of, of what they're doing. So they spend half the time producing these products and then they spend the rest of their time putting it all back together to make your chocolate. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. So. Now, one of the things that's changed over the last few years is we're looking time and time again at different types of how can we make chocolate more healthy. Um, you know, often the chocolate hit that we're getting from commercial chocolates is the sugar. You know, we you. We're used to Cadbury's, you know, Dairy Milk and Galaxy and all that kind of stuff. So, you, you know, those tend to have about 40%, 50% sugar in them. So we're desperately trying to find ways of making chocolate more healthy, less sugar. Um, if anybody's ever had some of the diabetic chocolates, some of them, they have a very laxative. <laughs> they work very, very efficiently. So, you know, we're looking at different ways. So one of the ways, Cadbury's, if you ever see it in the shops, they do a um, reduced sugar one, a reduced sugar dairy milk. It's not bad, it's a little bit grainy, but they're using coconut. So they're um, grinding down coconut. The process is long and very painstaking. So the product is actually, they're making a loss on the product. It 
so expensive to produce at the moment. But somebody else has developed um, Evocale. I have to remember the name. It's not on the it's not on the commercial market at the moment. Mm -hmm. So you're one of the first groups of people to really get the chance to try it. I'll let you go a couple of bits. I'll take I'll take a few bits. So I'll this I'll is a this is a dark chocolate. Mm. So and the sugar comes from the cocoa bean, uh, cocoa pod. The air, the, the cocoa pods just used to be thrown away. They were just something that you would go into compost. So they're getting the sugar from that, and that actually makes quite a fruity. It's still very very dark, but it tastes a little bit sweet. It tastes a little bit fruity. In fact, if you really let it melt on your tongue, you can get a lot of fruit, almost tropical fruits out of it. So you see, that's not available to buy. It's coming. It, it's it, coming soon. It's been on. It's been on the go for a few, ah. um, for a couple of years. Okay. But nobody really has commercially made that that really? jump yet. Do you it. think they will? Yes, but it's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. It's about three times the cost okay. of, or cost, three times the cost of a good chocolate. Mm -hmm. So you're probably talking four or five times the cost of a dairy milk or something. But it's got that sort of slightly fruity. It is prickly. It tastes of Again, it's not going to be to everybody's taste. It's, it's, to some of you, it's going to still be very, very dark, too dark for you. So I think, especially for the young ones, it might just be a little uh -huh. bit too, yeah. <laughs> too dark. But we're, get, we're, getting, we're getting to your style in a minute. <laughs> we will get there. Any thoughts? Because at the moment... This is very much coming out to um, chocolatiers and so on for feedback. So, thoughts, feedback that I can pass forward? Yes? No? Yeah. 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 Well, yes. <laughs> the price will eventually, um, it will come down. But to make it come down, it's got to be more commercially made. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it would make very expensive truffles if you were using it. And at the moment, it's also quite ha hard for the chocolatier to handle. You know, I'm going to show you how to melt chocolate in, in a wee bit. And so, still got tons of time, guys. So, nice. It's like another espresso shot, isn't it? Yeah. So, when we're finished, I'm, I've got some, some, a couple of other chocolates if you wanted to have a taste when we're done. But I'm going to move on to what is now what I would call your more commercial, your more accessible. <laughs> so this is this is what I'd call a good quality Belgian dark chocolate. So it's only fifty four percent chocolate, dark cocoa, as opposed to eighty five percent, which the last one was. So it's sweeter, more accessible. It's more what you're going to get. If you go you know, to open chocolate shop or to the Isle of Chocolate, these are the style of chocolates that they'll be using. <coughs> you don't have to take one piece, guys. You can take a wee pinch of them. <laughs> so we're now getting to more of what you are probably used to. So if those that just arrived, you, you can get to we taste afterwards. We've been tasting the really dark chocolates. This is what I'd call the more accessible dark chocolates, which you know it's got a lot more sugar in, but it's still quite high in cocoa. One of the changes now that are coming, we've been we've been used to milk chocolates, again quite sweet usually about 25 to 30% amount of cocoa in them, but there's now quite a lot of high cocoa mm -hmm. milk chocolates. So, just think back when I was a child, does everybody remember Bourbon? Yeah. Yeah. Still on the go, I think. Oh, goodness, yeah. <laughs> but we used to think that was the darkest, bitterest yeah. chocolate you could get. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then now we've got to the point where I taste it, I think, that is sweet. Um, you know, compared with what's now on the market. 
So, so what, what are, what's happening with the milk chocolate? They're making milk chocolate still milky, but dark. When there's a little Calibut factory, I thought there was a load of tankers sat outside this, this factory, and I thought, oh, that's the milk coming in to make milk chocolate. No, these were tankers of chocolate going out. <laughs> and they basically, for the big commercial companies, so the likes of um, the Calibut, there's a factory down in Banbury, they make all the chocolate for Marks and Spencers mm -hmm. and places like that. And they transport it liquid in these huge tankers. And in Poland, one burst on the motor. I was just, <laughs> I was just thinking that. I went to Venice. Yeah, that one burst. Started. They ended up having to actually lift the tarmac <laughs> because they couldn't get oh, the wow. chocolate <laughs> off the road, basically. So they actually stripped the tarmac back wow. and re resurfaced. Oh, goodness. Because it, it would all just run out, set on the middle of the road. Anybody want to lick a road? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that would be quite a scene for uh, when are allowed. <laughs> okay, so, so this is 40% cocoa. It's a little bit more um, greasy, maybe, is the best term for it. So how's everybody doing? Not chocolated out yet? No. <laughs> Another change, of course, is that there's now many, many Scottish chocolatiers who are doing really interesting things with chocolate in Scotland. There's a lot of great businesses, small scale. Um, you obviously, you've got open here, but that's been a big change over the years. Yeah. Um, we should be really proud of that skill, but I think. There are a lot. In Scotland. And we also have um, Ruth Hicks. Yeah. You've come across yes. Ruth. Um, I came across Ruth at the Chocolate Academy when I was doing one of my sculpting courses, um, and she um, is the British, sculpt, uh, British chocolate champion from about three years ago, four years ago now, um, and she competed in the world's chocolates in Paris. Amazing. Every year you have these world chocolate championships mm -hmm. where over three days they produce a sculpture, and I'm not joking, the sculpture's this high. <laughs> And as part of it, they have to move that sculpture. Wow. And you can guarantee that three or four people's two years' work will fall during the, during the moving. You can imagine you've spent two years preparing for this competition, mm -hmm. and it breaks. You yeah. know, so, but Ruth's made it. I think Ruth came, I think, fifth that year. So she she's did a, really, really well. Peoples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she's quite, you know, her work is quite amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so thoughts on that? Is that getting to more what you are used to? I prefer the other one. Sorry? I prefer the one that's before the, it. The, the darker yeah. without the milk. Yeah. So again, things are changing. We've got milk chocolates that do not contain milk. You know, they, they're using other products to get that milk chocolate flavor. Um, you know, so we, we, we're very much moving into availability for people who are you know, lactose intolerant and things like that. So hopefully we're getting flavors now that you might like we one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> might not, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's better for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's more like it. Right, so this is what I would call industry standard milk chocolate. Um, we've just got two more, to, two more to taste, and then I'll do a little bit on, I'll try not to come out and break the microphone this time. A <laughs> um, couple more to taste, and then I'm going to do a wee demonstration on, on how to handle chocolate. So d don't worry about just taking one. You can just take, you can take a wee pinch what kind of things have you made out of chocolate sculpture? What, what would you... My favourite piece is a dragon. I oh. used to do a dragon about this dragon high. Dragon chocolate. So in reds and, you know, um, and again, white chocolate, which we've got here, and cocoa butter, we can add colourings to. Mm -hmm. So once we've added colourings to, we can make the chocolate whatever colour we want. Right. Okay. So, you know... You could, we could do a unicorn if you want. <laughs> now there's a thought. Yeah, chocolate unicorn. <laughs> chocolate unicorn. Um, 
When we've had the students at the school, at the college, we have done things like one person made a chess set out of chocolate. Um, somebody made a skull. He carved a skull out of white chocolate mm -hmm. and then went down the goth theme of putting, um, did roses around the outside in chocolate and so on. So really, to be honest, chocolate you can do anything with. When you're, scu when you're sculpting, you're often molding rather than actually carving. Right. Um, okay. So right. you're making molds. Yeah. So whereas probably 20 years ago, World Chocolate Masters was not expensive to enter other than the cost of the chocolate, mm. nowadays the molding can be £100,000 worth of molding. Wow. Just to enter. Wow. When, when I asked the... Oh, I can't remember the guy's name... Um, he came second in the world championships uh, about five years, six years ago. And I asked him, or somebody asked him in the, in, you know, at the academy, you know, what did it cost to do it? He said, mm, about £20,000 in my marriage. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> now, if, you've, if, you know, if it's cost okay. you marriage and you're dealing with chocolate, <laughs> I'd question that. But the reality is, is, you know, these kind of competitions, you, you just become so focused. Mm -hmm. You know, now 100,000, 150,000 would not be an out-the-box cost to be Goodness able to me. enter these competitions. You have to be very serious about that. You, you are yeah. serious. But when you see the pieces... Um, so if you go online and have a look at World Chocolate Masters and you will see videos there of some of the pieces, they are... They're just... They're just mm. stunning, really, really stunning. So that's probably closer to what you have. I've got one more chocolate here, and here we're going to the sweetest of the lot, white chocolate, which really isn't a chocolate. We're all used to calling white chocolate white chocolate, mm -hmm. but it contains no cocoa. Cocoa, yeah. It contains cocoa butter, sugar, and vanilla. So that's where that flavours. This is a really lovely, this is called a velvet, and it's a really smooth, creamy white chocolate. You know, and again, go back 40 years, your white chocolate was the Milky Bar Kid or yeah, nothing. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. So, and again, there are different flavours, almost anything that you can come across. Okay, so... If you just give me a second. And are people still eating as much white chocolate? Or have sales of that gone down? No. Nope. Uh, white chocolate has become, has become more popular again. Has it? Yeah. Right. So we've gone to the two extremes. Milk mm -hmm. chocolate seems to have yeah. slipped. But dark, dark chocolates are very much in fashion. And, and white, white chocolates. Interesting. Um, there is another chocolate on the go. But unfortunately, my... Delivery of it didn't come in time. Has it, but I have a tiny, tiny bit here that I can just show you. Has anybody come across ruby chocolate? So ruby chocolate. Ah, it's pink. Pink. I've actually probably got enough. If if you want it, do you want to taste? <laughs> Not going to say no. Of course. Not going to say no. I'll put I'll put out a little a little of this. Not a lot left. So ruby chocolate is, there's no colourings, no artificial flavourings in it, but it tastes quite strawberry style. Sorry, one more. <laughs> one more. Quite almost strawberry, strawberry flavoured. But basically it's, the, it's a mix of the a change of processing that they use during Instead of just conching it down, they're fermenting it slightly different, um, and so on. So, other than sugar, this is just this is just a pure chocolate. Mm. You want to taste? Have I broken you already? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to bring that forward. Mm. Probably turn that that way around. When you melt chocolate, I'm assuming quite a lot of you will have melted chocolate for cakes or something like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of things can go wrong. Mm. So, traditionally, 
you would melt it in a double boiler, so you'd have a pan inside a pan of water. You'd bring it up to 50, 52, um, 52 degrees. You'd reduce it to 26. You'd then rise it again to 35 to get that perfect chocolate. And what you'd be looking for is a chocolate that you, I don't know if you can hear snap. that on there, but you can hear a snap mm. with it. You know, it, it is, it's really, really sort of solid. It doesn't melt, you know, in your hands, doesn't melt. So here, and also you want it to have a nice shine to it. So here I've got chocolate that's sort of underheated and overheated. So it's ah. all milk chocolate, oh, sorry, all plain chocolate. So this is underheated. I don't know whether the camera can pick up on that. But you can see, yeah, it's a bit shiny, mm. but you've got marks on it. It's not, it's not purely smooth. So if I've done the job correctly, and this is me with a slight panic. Oops, I put fingerprints on it. But you can see that's shiny, it's smooth, and it's got a nice, nice sort of snap to it, like, like that, that mm -hmm. kind of snap. But as I get to this, that's sort of overheated, it just falls in my hand. Ah, okay. It's got no, it doesn't hold together. It's melting in my fingers. The, the chocolate mm -hmm. just becomes ruined. Mm -hmm. So if there's no snap, then this, that indicates there's a it, you, You've overheated it. Now there is a, you know, it, a, re, a slight cheating among all this, that if you're making chocolate that you want people to pick up and hold and so on, you, you want that, you want that snap. You want it not to melt in the fingers. You know, I can run my hands over it. That doesn't, that's not melting. Whereas that, I can feel, well, yeah, it's sticking to my fingers. You know, so, so yeah, so you want that snap. That's great if you want to eat it. If you overheat it, if you're making a chocolate cake, sometimes it's worth just slightly overheating it so you can cut through it. Mm. You know, I love that lovely gloss on the chocolate mm. cake. But the second you put a knife to try and cut it, the whole thing goes, tick, 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 right. and you can't cut it. So you could overheat it. Bit of trial and error, really, though, isn't it? When you're Ve very much it. so. But instead of going through that process that I talked of taking up to 52, dropping it 28 up to 32, which is traditionally how we've been doing it for years, if you're really careful in the microwave, you can, you can get this right. So, well, just see if I can do this. So, oops. Uh, time. If, you, if you're doing chocolate in the microwave, don't leave it. Don't, you know, it's very easy to sort of think, oh, it'll take a few minutes. No, it won't. I tend to do it on a basis of about 30, 40 seconds for the first one give it a stir, 20 seconds for the next, give it a stir, it's starting to get sticky by now, and then maybe 10 second burst after that. What you want to do is just prepare that to the point where it just melts. So I've never used this microwave before, guys, so I am very much, I could, I could overdo it. You can see at this point, I've just got little bits just starting to melt. Mm -hmm. But keep stirring it, keep, keep moving it round every time you do it. So. Um, if you haven't got a microwave, you're then talking of the pan method in which you have to then heat it up, cool it down, and then use it. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is best for maybe a, a novice, a beginner. Use the microwave. Microwave. Time and time again. I use, I use the microwave for probably 90% of the chocolate, mm. unless I'm doing mm -hmm. big, big quantities for something, for sculpting or something like that. Oops, 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 oops. <laughs> you can see that's me talking, but again, you can yeah. see now it's starting to get a little bit more. a little bit more sort of uh, gloopy is probably the best description. So.
Is anybody any questions? I've been rattling on here and hardly let any chance. Any questions? <laughs> yes, so tempering would be that process of taking it up to 52 degrees where you're stabilizing the fat, the cocoa butter fats and the cocoa powder together. And then you would be reducing it down again to make sure that those are, once they're stable, you've got to get them cool quick to make sure that they stay at that level. And then you need a working temperature of about 32 degrees. And that 32 degrees um, is, is really, really quite important because if you are dipping chocolates or anything like that, um, it's just the right texture and viscosity to, be, to hold it in. So now you see at this point, this is the point where you, it can very, very quickly go over. Mm. So you can spend, you, you've still got a few lumps in that. 10 seconds is probably all you're going to need from this point. You know, if, you, if the whole thing has melted, you've gone too far. Um, so we'll give, it, we'll give it the 10 seconds. Right, there's... Good question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, providing you haven't burnt it. Once you burn chocolate, chocolate really takes on flavour. Yeah. So if you, make, if you leave it in the microwave and just a little bit in the middle burns, the whole lot will taste, unfortunately. But if, say, you've overheated it um, and it's not, going to, it's not going to set properly, let it go fully cold but then you'll have to go through the full tempering process of heating it to 52 degrees to cook, to get it, to melt it down, stabilize it, drop it down the temperature, and then use it. You couldn't recover it in the microwave. Okay. Once, you've, once you've done it, in, once you've got it wrong in the microwave, you know, that is one of my absolute favorite views. Yeah. You know, proper, proper chocolate. Um, so I said, and that's now ready, and that will set into a proper chocolate at this point. Oh. Um, and that works. The only, the only difference between the chocolates is dark chocolates lit, takes a little bit longer. Milk chocolates, more delicate. You can still do it in the microwave, but it's, it's got that little bit of delicacy. One of the real dangers to chocolate is water. If I put one drop of water in that, it does a process it calls seizing, and it just goes, ah. it goes into a solid lump, and that's not recoverable. That's it. Just break it up and eat it. <laughs> because you, you can't do anything with that. Absolutely. Right, we've still got 10 minutes left. So I thought, one of the other things I thought we could just do is if you're making truffles, and this is what, what I'll be demonstrating tomorrow, again, don't overthink the process. Make it as simple as you can for you at home. Now, some places will, you know, traditionally you would temper your chocolate, you'd heat your cream to exactly 52, degree, uh, 52 degrees, and you'd put the two together. If you want to do chocolate, a chocolate sauce for your ice cream, you know, anything like that, or if you want to actually make truffles, equal quantity of cream and chocolate will make you a truffle that will just about set. And then you, can, then you can either pour it, you know, what I'd sometimes do, and I'll demonstrate this tomorrow, is pour it out and then let it set in the fridge, cut it into pieces and then coat it. Or you could pour it into moulds and let it set and then coat it. But I'm just going to heat that up. From a safety point of view, if you're dealing with cream, now I'm using an Elmley safe, um, a UHT cream is really, really safe. But I would always say bring your cream to the boil mm -hmm. so that then you know you've got a safe product. And then in the fridge, your chocolates will last a month or more. Okay. Whereas if you don't bring it up to temperature, if you just bring it up to 52, you'd then have that issue that your chocolates would only last a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea how long this will take. Where's the best place to go for 
recipes, you know, online for recipes and tips if, if anyone it's, wanted to I, attempt their own. I hate to say it, guys, but good old YouTube and so on, you know, are actually quite good. Um, there is a, um, the, the, the makers of Calibut, hang on, get the right bag, get the right company. So the makers of Calibut have a website, so you can go on there and they've got quite a few sort of short videos, mm. videos on how to temper, videos on how to make truffles, etc., etc. You can buy these now, um, you know, I think the chocolate shop down here actually smell, sells the small um, one kilo bags okay. now. Um, fading that, again, hate saying it, but online is always a, um, a simple, simple way of getting it. There's lots and lots of companies. Just watch your price because some companies are buying big 10 kilo bags, putting them into smaller bags and charging an absolute fortune. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably should be about £15 a kilo, okay. which when you, sounds a lot, but when you consider you're paying £2 for a 100, a 100 gram bar in the shops, then it actually isn't that expensive. Oops. One more attempt to try and get that boiling. There's also a lot of chocolate workshops and things now, hands-on chocolate experiences. Yeah. I don't know if Open Chocolate Company do that. I don't, do don't think they do at the they moment. No, but there are quite a few around Scotland. But there's plenty on the go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if nice there is place. enough interest, I'll consider putting one on at the college as there an evening are. course. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's one of these things we sometimes... Oh, that's why. Um, we often find, oh, yes, yes, do a chocolate course. And when we actually come to do it, hardly anybody can mm. make it. It's difficult to know, do people want a day course? You know, would you like to do it as yeah. a day or as an evening? Mm -hmm. you know, um, because we've done it as Saturdays and we've done it as evenings. Mm -hmm. And you get very different people at yeah. these things. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to get up there. A nice gift, though, for someone to give or receive. Yeah. So... So I've just done a boiled, boiled the cream and literally just put your chocolate mm -hmm. in. Now, think of, if you think about it, I always use dark chocolate to make a chocolate sauce because milk chocolate tends to get a bit sweet and dark chocolate to cream, you're making milk chocolate. <laughs> so anyway, when you first start, I don't know, so I'll leave it there. So when you first start, it looks like it will never mix. And if you just keep going, all of a sudden, it comes together again in that gorgeous. And putting that on your, on your ice cream, a warm chocolate sauce on your ice cream. Absolutely mm, gorgeous. Nice. So, if anybody wants a taste, you know, You're we've. Not <laughs> <laughs> I've got spoons <laughs> here. If anybody wants, a, wants to come down for a, for a taste of that or a spoonful of dark oh. chocolate. But again, think about if you're going to be doing um, a, a cup of hot chocolate. Think in the oh. veins of you buy basically a cocoa powder. If you're buying dairy, you know, um, a dairy milk or a Cadbury's drinking chocolate, in that they've got some milk powder and you're adding water to it. If you want just a, what I would call a hot chocolate, get a handful of your chocolate and maybe the chocolate that is ruined that you can't use for, <laughs> you know, that you can't use for your, um, for actual chocolate work, heat up a cup of milk and put your chocolate in that and just stir it. Mm. You might need a spoonful of sugar lovely, in it. Lovely. And that is just what hot chocolate is. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go out and buy chocolate powders. Like Have a proper you know, hot chocolate in the winter, that would be lovely. Yeah. yeah. And then you can add anything to it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you, dash of brandy. Mm. You know, 
um, grated rind of orange juice. Uh, sorry, orange, orange juice, juice of orange yeah. of orange peel, Lovely. just to give a chocolate orange flavour. Totally natural. You know, you're not you you no no com no chemicals, no artificial flavourings, and you've got a chocolate orange drink. Mm. So, okay. Any any questions? Any more questions? So, yeah, I tend to use at full power. I'll shut that, try and stop it, make it shut up. Um, so I would always start off with 30 seconds, drop to 20, and then after that, do 10 second intervals. Yeah, but make sure you stir well between each level. Um, and it will depend, you know, microwaves can be anything from 700 watt to 1,000 watt. So it is, diff you know, I can't definitively say how long, but once you've done that 30, 20, 10 seconds, bang, 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 and just keep putting it in, but no more than 10 seconds at a time, because it really does go very, very quickly. Once you get to that point where it's almost melted, you know, it will go very, very quickly, but make sure you give it a really good stir in between. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> workshops, yeah. you got demand now, Chris. I know, I know. I know I'm going to have to... I think you are. I have to get something organised. Um, the OHI Argyle or the Argyle College website, we'll get them up onto there um, as soon. Or if you phone the college and put... And, mm. and to be honest, guys, if you phone the college and say, I'm interested in a chocolate course... It gives me yeah. impetus to go to the, my bosses and say, hey, guys, I've got Damn. half a dozen, dozen people who would be interested in doing chocolate courses. I tend to restrict the numbers to about eight for a course so that you get, mm -hmm. and it is hands-on. I don't, I don't like doing, I'm not keen on doing this. I'd much rather do smaller groups where you come, and you wait. actually, you know, you make you make it, and you take away at the end of the day your little packets of chocolates. You know, um, you know I tend to do it in the schools. Um, we move around Argyle, so I've got Campbelltown School in, a couple, in about three weeks' time. I'll have Isla in about four weeks' time to go and do chocolate with the, with the, with the school children. And they come out with, apps, you know, they come out with professional-looking chocolates. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult. But said, if anybody's here tomorrow, you'll get to see yeah, where I'm going with that. Lovely. So, okay, guys. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.